So this is my house and this is the common living area that Hello hello everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new to my channel then I am Tarusha Gimire and I make videos about life in Canada and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how you can find accommodation and I'm going to give you a mini tour of my house so you get an idea of how an international student lives here in Canada so if you like my video please press the thumbs up button and if you have any question you can reach out to me on my Instagram or you can comment down below and if you want more content related to Canada then please subscribe to my channel In this video, I'll be talking about the off-campus accommodation. There are usually two types of accommodation, on-campus and off-campus. But I live off-campus and a lot of international students also live off-campus. So I'll be talking about the off-campus accommodation. And I have divided this video into four different parts. The first part, I would be talking about how you can find accommodation in Canada. Now, finding accommodation can be a little challenging, especially for someone who does not know anyone here in Canada. If you know someone here in Canada, the easiest way to find accommodation is ask them if they have anyone who knows their subletting apartment or leasing out apartments or renting out their apartments. And this can be a little easier. But if you do not know anyone, then you still have two options. The first option is to find a group of two or three people who are also looking for accommodation in the place that you're going to so that you can get together and look for accommodation together. Or um, the second option is you look for accommodation yourself. In both the cases, it's very important that you're very careful because a lot of places that you will be looking for accommodation right like Kijiji, Facebook marketplace, WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups and there are a lot of scammers out there. There are obviously genuine sellers as well but it, it is your job to distinguish between the genuine person and the scammer. So in order to be sure that you're not getting scammed it's very important that you have someone who can go and verify that the landlord is genuine and the place that you're going to rent out is genuine before you pay. If you do not have anyone who can verify this information, then I suggest you to first take a temporary accommodation and then come here, see it for yourself and then do the final booking. Uh, I, I see a lot of videos where people say that you cannot find accommodation, you have to book it from from your home country that's not true you do find accommodation i know it is a little tough right now because of the housing crisis but it's not impossible you can still come to canada and look for accommodation here in canada because i see a lot of people they sublet their apartment sublease their apartment or rent out their apartment so it's not impossible it can be a little difficult but if you invest your time and resources you will find accommodation now second is the features that should be there in different accommodation or the features that i suggest should be there in different accommodation that you're looking out for now the first is a room type there are two kinds of room types usually the first one is a shared room and the second one is the private room now in the shared room you would be sharing your room your kitchen your living area your washroom everything but in the private room you would just be sharing the kitchen living area and washroom your bedroom would be for yourself your bedroom would be just yours I have a private room and I do not share my room with anyone. My room is just for me. But I do share my living area, my kitchen, my laundry, my washroom. So this is my house and this is the common living area that we all share. And this is our kitchen that is again in sharing so we are three people living in this house right now and we share this kitchen. This is one of the refrigerator that we share and the other refrigerator is there we have two refrigerators this one is again the dining area and we share this dining area as well every electronics in the kitchen is usually provided by the landlord for me the refrigerator stove oven and microwave everything was already provided by my landlord now in the basement we have a laundry room and this is another thing that's very important to have in your house uh, if you have a laundry that's already in the house then it's very easy because you do not have to go out to do laundry now in Canada you also find a lot of houses which have the basement room and the upper floor for me I live in the upper floor but my house also has a basement and the basement is under construction and it's empty so I can show you one of the room of the basement of how a basement room actually here is in Canada so this is the basement here and it is quite spacious you can see the basement is quite spacious. Sometimes the basement do not have a high roof, so that can be a problem. But this one has a good roof, this one has good high roof, so that's not a problem at all. Another thing that I want to talk about is try to look for the place that's furnished. 
for example this room comes with a very good cupboard you can see how spacious the cupboard is it comes with a very good chair and a table and it also comes with the good bed frame and the mattress because the house was furnished i saved a lot of money because i didn't have to buy a mattress or a table or chair or anything it was already provided to me by my landlord now the third part is budget it's very important to find accommodation that fits your budget and the budget can vary from place to place for example in brampton if you need to find a private room it would be from like 800 to 900 but in windsor if you have to find a private room you can find it for like 550 also so it really depends on the place that you're going to but it's very important that you fix a budget before you look for accommodation and find accommodation that fits your budget perfectly so while looking for accommodation i suggest you to look for places that has utilities included in the rent so that you know at the end of the day how much money you're paying that makes the calculation of money easier and also during winters we use heaters and stuff like that so that can increase the price of electricity now the fourth part is the application process a lot of landlords here want you to sign lease and that's perfectly fine signing a lease is good for you and the landlord both um, but i suggest you to sign a lease for a shorter duration unless you're very sure that you want to be in that place the place is near the accommodation or the places near to your university or work or colleges stuff like that and you're hundred percent sure that you want to be in that place for the duration of one year then only sign the lease for longer duration or else I suggest you to sign lease for a short period of time also if you do sign lease for a long period of time then make sure that your lease is transferable so if your lease is transferable then you can transfer you can sublet your accommodation to someone else who's coming to canada and you can change your accommodation before signing the lease make sure you read all the terms and conditions you read everything about the utilities and how much you're paying how is how are the utilities going to be calculated everything so that's all for my video i hope my video was helpful and you enjoyed watching my video until next time tada Thank you.